do in this tutorial is show you how to set up a basic Hibernate development environment. Now what I've done is I've downloaded a number of files into an underscore temp directory. I've got MySQL, MySQL GUI tools, MySQL drivers, JDK 6, I've got Hibernate annotations, and the Hibernate Core 3.26 as well. And I'm going to start off basically by just installing MySQL. In order to do data persistence with Hibernate, you need a database. I'm going to do a, a custom installation. And in this custom installation, I'm just going to change the directory that MySQL gets installed into to underscore MySQL. I like to have everything just put into an underscore directory. It always makes things a little easier to find. And I will allow this installation to go through. Now, with MySQL installed, I'm not going to configure MySQL. don't need to do that right now. I'm actually going to install the MySQL GUI tools. And that's just a fast installation as well. I'm just going to change the folder to, again, an underscore, underscore GUI tools. Click OK. Do a complete installation and allow that installation to go to fruition. And that gets finally installed. We get a few advertisements there that we don't mind. And we are all completed installing MySQL. After that, I'm going to install the JDK. Now with the JDK, again, I'm going to install it into an underscore directory. I believe that this is JDK version 6, and we'll not only install the compiler tools and the, the runtime tools, but I think a, a whole Java runtime environment will get installed as well. So accept the license agreement, change the directory that we install to, and again, I'm just going to make this underscore JDK underscore off the C drive underscore JDK 1.6. Click the next button. And after all the development tools are installed, it wants to install a JRE. I'm actually going to just allow that to go into the underscore JRE 6 directory. Click the next button. And finally, everything gets installed for the JDK and the JRE. Now, if you actually want to do some verification of, of all of those things, you can just open up a command prompt. You can actually even just look at your C drive. Notice I've got the GUI tools, JDK 1.6, JRE 1.6, JRE and MySQL installed. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up the command prompt. And from the command prompt, I'm just going to dig down into the MySQL directory. And you'll notice that there's a little MySQL D-NT.exe. To start MySQL, it's just MySQL D-NT-console. And looking at this, everything should start up normally. And I'm getting all the information that I want to see. I'm not going to block that port, but you can see that it's actually running on port 3306. I want to take a look and just see if my GUI tools are working. My favorite GUI tool is the MySQL Query Browser. So I'm going to open that up, see if I can actually connect to the MySQL database. It'll be on localhost, root, and no schema for now. We'll create a schema later. Just ignore that little error message. And if I can see things such as the test schema, MySQL schema, those are all things that are being made available by the running MySQL server. So that tells me that everything seems to be installed properly there. I could even, if I wanted to, go into my JDK and just make sure that my Java runtime is working. My Java, and it looks like it is. Java version 1.6 for update number 10 beta. So great, I'm over the moon with all of that. Now it's just a, a job to set up my Hibernate libraries. And you can see I've downloaded the Hibernate core, Hibernate annotations, and connector J as well. Off the C drive, I'm going to create a new folder.
hiblib. And in this directory, I'm going to put all of my Hibernate related libraries that have to be on the runtime and compi compile time and compile time uh, class path for Java and the Java runtime environment. Now, my temp directory, I've got Hibernate Golden Edition. I'm going to extract that and extract that to the current directory. And with the Hibernate core extracted, geez, I don't know why that took so long, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then extract the Hibernate annotations. Extract all, Hibernate annotations, right there into the temp directory as well. Okay, and then that extracts the Hibernate annotations. And then finally, I've got connector J, which I want to extract as well. And I'll throw those all right into the same directory. So, with all the files extracted, I'm going to take a look at my temp directory here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of the core files that I need into this hiblib directory right there, which is currently empty. And so, for the Hibernate core, all of the Hibernate core files have been placed into this folder here, Hibernate 3.2. And you'll actually see a lib directory here, with just a junk load of stuff. All of these files, like log4j, junit, jackson, all of that has to be copied and pasted into this hiblib directory. Now these aren't actually Hibernate files, but these are actually all of the different files that Hibernate uses in order to work properly. So let me take a look. There's all of the files moved over there, all the different jar files. Now that was from the temp hibernate 3.2 lib directory. The actual hibernate jar file though is right there, hibernate3.jar. And that is really the core of hibernate, and I need to move that into my hiblib directory as well. So let me make sure that hibernate3 is in there. And there it is, Hibernate, using that American alphabetization that always throws me off. Okay, now that gets the Hibernate files ready. Of course, I want to use Hibernate with JPA annotations. And so I open up the Hibernate annotations zip there. You'll see a lib directory with EJB3 persistence and Hibernate commons in there. I need to copy those and put those into this hiblib directory as well. Now, hiblib is just something that I created, uh, just a folder I created, but it's a place where I'm going to put all of the libraries that I need to link to. EJB3 persistence, that's where all the JPA, Java Persistence API implementation libraries are. Now, that's actually not the Hibernate annotations, that's the support. The actual Hibernate annotations file that I need is right there, Hibernate annotations. So I need to copy that file and move that into the hiblib directory also. Now, in order to connect a Java program to a database, you actually need JDBC drivers. If you're using DB2, you need DB2 drivers. If you're using uh, MySQL, you need MySQL drivers. MySQL drivers are packaged in something called the MySQL Connector J or Connector Java package. And they're all inside of this jar file here. So my JDBC drivers that I need for connecting to MySQL are right in there. And I take those files, move them into my hiblib directory. And now with MySQL installed, the MySQL GUI tools installed, JDK 1.6 installed, and the Hibernate and Hibernate annotations libraries all downloaded and the required libraries all placed into this hiblib folder, I'm ready to go and actually write some code and test to see if this whole environment is working properly and my Java runtime can link to all of the different EJB jar files here. I'm actually going to just kind of scroll down so you can see all the files that I have. Um, Ant clean import, stuff like that. That's all used by each, by Hibernate. Hibernate 3 is really the core jar file. Um, EJB3 and annotations and commons, those all come with the uh, with the annotations module. 
and there's the driver for my database. Again, if you're using Sybase or you're using Oracle um, or DB2, you'll need to download the appropriate drivers for those databases. But that's about it for this tutorial. The next tutorial will show you how to write a little bit of Java code using TextPad, compile it with the compiler, and see if it can actually use the Hibernate framework to connect to your database. Happy hibernating!